This video is the third and final part of building a 10 core Unraid server from start to finish. And this part concentrates on VMs and Docker containers. OK, so in the last video we set up our shares like you can see here. So now it's actually time to start setting up some containers. The one I'm going to set up first is called Crusader and it's a file manager. So it's really useful when we've got our server just set up if we want to put files onto our server. And because also in the last video we installed unassigned devices, we can plug in like a USB flash drive, we can plug in a USB hard drive, or even just plug in a SATA drive and then we can copy the data off that onto our array. So it's a really easy way of just being able to get stuff off an old machine maybe and putting it onto a nice shiny new server. Now I'm not going to go through much in detail about Crusader here, but if you want to see a full video on how to set it up then please see my video about that. But just one tip, what I'm doing here is I'm setting this location to RW Slave and this is the unassigned devices location. Um, the reason I did that is because if you don't it doesn't always show up properly when you're using Crusader. So that's just a little tip that I forgot to mention in the original guide video. Right, so we've got Crusader running here, so that's all installed. So I'm going to go back to the main tab here. And I'm going to plug in a USB flash drive, which I have some ISO images on that I want to transfer over onto this server. So when I plug it in, you'll just see it come up in the unassigned devices. And now to use it, I just have to click on to mount and unassigned devices will mount that device. So now I'm going to go back to the Docker tab and start up Crusader. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to browse on the right hand side to the user directory and then go to my ISO share here. And on the left hand pane I'm going to go to my unassigned devices and there you can see my flash drive. And then inside my flash drive here are some various Linux distros. And I'm going to copy all of these and put them into my ISO share on the server. And to keep everything neat and tidy I'm going to make a new folder for the Linux distros and obviously call it Linux. And I'll copy all of the files across over into here. So I'm copying across some Linux distros to install on VMs, but if you had an external hard drive or even an internal hard drive and it was full of, say, movies, you'd use this method as well. Much quicker than copying over the network. And talking about movies, every good Unraid server needs some good media server software. And I'm going to install MB. Yes, I know this Plex as well, um, but I prefer MB, so I'm going to install that first. I am going to install Plex 2 after because I'm not building this server for me to use. So by having both on, the next owner can choose which one they want to use, whichever they prefer. So what I'm doing here is I'm just mapping the media path, the media share that we set up earlier over onto the Docker container. So we're going to see all of the media and better play that back. Right, so that's pulling the Docker container down. Okay, and so it's installed now. You can see here, this tells us where the various docking containers are mapped to, and that's where we map the media. And you can see MB is all ready to be set up now. But I'm going to stop that, and I'm going to go across and install Plex. And for Plex, I'm choosing to use the Linux server container. And you can see here, there's no actual mappings um, other than just to the config data. But you can see on the overview, it says that media should be mapped over to wherever our media is. So I'm going to add that in manually. I'm just going to click on add another path and then just set the details in here. Um, forward slash media for the container path. And then just browse through to the media, just the same as I did in MB, and then select that. Okay, so let's just apply that and pull down the container, then we'll check Plex. Okay, Plex is working, so that's good. Um, I'm not going to bother signing in and configuring it, so I'll just stop it now. Okay, so our media servers are all installed. So now let's install some download clients. Um, first I'm going to install Deluge. And the version of Deluge I'm going to use, I'm going to use Binhex's Deluge VPN. Um, if anyone's doing torrents, I say it's always best to do it through a VPN. Just in case you download something you shouldn't by mistake. Okay, so let's install it. So first we're going to have to just fill out the Docker container template. Now I'm going to actually turn the VPN off by setting this to no. Now I'm only turning the VPN off because this server isn't for me and I can't really fill in my own 
personal private internet access account details. So I'll leave that for the next owner to do. Now I have done a video before about setting up Deluge VPN, um, but it's a little bit out of date now. So time permitting, I'm gonna make a new one within the next week or so and get that up on the channel. But here you can see by default that the data folder, which is the folder where Deluge is gonna download things, is set in the app data. So I'm gonna change that to the download share that we created earlier. Okay, so the container's pulled down now, so that's done. So let's open the web UI. And if you go to preferences, you can see here it says that it's gonna to download to forward slash data incomplete. And it's gonna move completed to forward slash data completed. So let's click apply on that, and then okay. And we're gonna open up Crusader now, and then go to our download share. And we're gonna create those two folders complete and the incomplete folder okay so now we've got those two folders which correspond to the folders in Deluge so let's try it out by adding a torrent let's download Ubuntu okay so that's downloading now so let's go back across to Crusader and we'll have a look in the incomplete folder and there we can see that it's downloading there Okay, so now the torrent's downloaded, so we can look in the incomplete folder and it's not there. And that's because it's been moved over correctly into the completed folder. Okay, so that's done. Um, but before we go, I'm going to open up my ISO file and I'm going to drag the file across over in there so it's in the correct place. Okay, so we've got a torrent downloader, so now let's set up SAB for downloading NCBs from Usenet. And again, I'm going to change the data path from the app data over to our downloads folder. Um, but if we look here, check that Crusader, it uses port 8080 and so does SAB. So we're going to need to change that to 8081 so there's no conflict. So click apply and it will pull down the container. And you can see here that a lot of the layers already exist. And that's because this is an Arch-based container, the same as the Deluge ones. So we've already downloaded those before. Right, so we're at the Saab wizard, and here we put in our Usenet provider details. I like to use Eureka myself, I think it's a great provider, and it's pretty cheap. You can find a link for that in the description. If you look here, Saab uses an incomplete and a complete folder as well. So let's go back across to Crusader, and we'll create two separate folders for the Usenet ones. Um, the first one we'll call Usenet Complete. and the second one, Usenet Incomplete. And that's just basically so we can keep the torrents and the Usenet files separate. Okay, and now here I'm just setting the correct permissions for all the downloaded files. To see how to set up SAB properly, just please see my proper video on setting up SAB. But for now while I'm here, I'm just gonna copy out the API key because we'll need that in a minute. Right, so our download clients are set up, so now let's download some things that are gonna use these clients. We're going to use Sonar for TV shows. Again here I'm mapping the data to our download share and the forward slash media to our media share. But I'm going to create some files inside the media share. I'm going to create TV shows, movies and music. And now I'm going to map that to the media forward slash TV shows. Okay, so let's pull down the container. Great, we got that. So now let's set up Radar, which is very similar to Sonar but for movies. Again, we'll do the same mappings but this time we're going to set the media to be the forward slash movies folder. Okay, let's pull that down. Right, so those two containers are downloaded. So now let's first um, configure Sonar. Now I'm going to skip through this really quickly, so if you want to see detail then please see my proper Sonar video. Um, here I'm adding SAB as the download client. I'm changing the port to 8081 because that's what we had to change it to because of Crusader. The host I'm calling it Tower and the API key that I said we'd need later, I'm pasting that in here. Yeah, and normally we'd set up some indexes, but I'll leave that to the next user to do. And next let's configure radar, really similar to sonar. Again, please see my radar video. Um, gonna make it so it renames the movies. And then add a download client, exactly the same as before. We're gonna give it a name local host is going to be tower and we need to change the port because of the crusader conflict 
and paste in the API key again and then save that. Right, so that's our Unraid Media Server all set up. So now let's go across and set up our VMs. We're going to start off with the Linux VM first. I'm going to install Fedora. So I'm going to give this VM four cores. I'm going to give it four gigs of RAM and just a small 30 gig hard drive and click create. Okay, so just starting up the VM and now going through the install prompts and installing Fedora, putting in a username and password, etc. And now that Fedora is installed, I'm installing Vert Manager now, which is a virtual machine manager. It has some really nice features that aren't available in the Unraid template manager. So with Vert Manager installed, now we can actually connect it to the Unraid VM. So sometimes it's going to be better to use this for various things. Um, other times it's just easier to use the Unraid template manager. But now there's the option to use both. So let's shut down Fedora and then edit the XML on the VM. And now I'm going to copy all of the XML and then open a custom template and paste the XML in here. This is going to make a clone of the VM. But I'm going to remove the UUID and I'm going to change the name to Fedora GPU. Untick Start VM after creation and click Create. So now we've got two VMs the same. So now I can click on Edit. Um, one thing we have to do is always put the primary VDisk back to manual, otherwise the Unraid VM Manager is going to want us to make a new VDisk because we've changed the name of the VM. So we just have to click Manual and then it will go back to the one that we had previously. And now I'm going to add the GPU, because that was the whole point of me creating this second VM. I find it easier to test the GPU in a Linux VM, because I don't have to install any drivers or anything. So if I can get it working here, I know it's going to work in Windows. And just on this part here, I just pop the ROM file in, because this is the primary GPU. Um, if you want to see about that, then please see my video about passing through an NVIDIA GPU. So the next thing I did was just to start up the VM and just check that the GPU pass through was working fine, which it was. So then after that, it's time to set up a Windows VM. So for installing Windows, I need the Vertio drivers. So I went to Settings and VM Manager and then downloaded the latest Vertio drivers. So I made a new Windows 10 template. I gave it four cores, eight gigs of RAM and a 70 gig VDisk. I used VNC to install it and just basically went through all of the Windows prompts. Chose Windows 10 Pro, loaded up the Vertio drivers and then installed Windows. So again I'm not going to go into much detail about installing Windows as a VM. I've done a video series on doing that so if you want to learn more then please watch that video. Okay, so the rest of the Vertio drivers have been installed. I'm going to shut down the VM, and now I want to pass through the GPU. So I'm going to set the GPU in the template manager. And again, as it's the only GPU in the system, I'm going to have to pass through the ROM file, exactly the same as I did in the Linux VM. And talking about the Linux VM, let's just go back to that one, and I'll show you what we can do with Vert Manager. So this is the Windows 10 VM here. And down on the left hand side, this is all the hardware in the machine. You can see like CPUs, memory, the Vert IO disk. And here are the PCI devices. This is the graphics card I just passed through. And this bit underneath here, this is the sound part of the graphics card. If we look at the CPUs again, another useful feature that Vert Manager can do, which we can't actually do in the Unraid Manager, is we can make emulated CPUs. So we can choose all these different types of CPUs. Everything from Pentium 2 CPUs to Ivy Bridge to Broadwell CPUs. And it's easy to add any hardware that's in the server. We just click on this button here. And we can add anything from virtual graphics cards to virtual sound cards. All of our PCI devices are in the list here. And we can just add them in. For example, here's the GTX 750 Ti. But one of the really useful things about Vert Manager is anything you actually change here, if you change the CPU, you add some hardware, you add a USB device, it doesn't change actually any custom edits you might have in the XML. And I've got custom edits in because I've got the ROM file passed through. So it's a really useful thing, Vert Manager. And again, if you want to learn more about Vert Manager, then please see my video about installing it into a VM for Unraid. Anyway, let's shut this down and let's start up Windows and see what the performance is like with the GPU pass through. So I ran a few tests. 
Of course I wanted to test the game with the 750Ti pass through, and for that I had assigned 4 cores to the VM, and I set the game with median settings and a resolution of 720p. In the past, trains were ordinary things, but now this monorail seems magic, doesn't it? I did have to enable the MSI interrupts in order to get perfect sound. Before I did that, there were some issues. I wanted to see how the 10 core CPU performed, so I ran some CPU passmark benchmarks with all 10 cores assigned, and then 8, then 6, and then 4 cores. And so with 10 cores assigned, it scored 11,939. Not at all bad. And with 8 cores assigned, it got 10,876. And next with 6 cores assigned, it scored 9,524. And now lastly, with only 4 cores assigned, it still scored a fairly respectable 7,569. So I think the server's got pretty good performance. It has respectable CPU mark scores, and it plays games okay. Yes, it's not running games in 4K with high settings, but if we threw a GTX 1080 in it, it probably would. Anyway, this has been a fun project, and I hope you like watching the whole build from start to finish. Let me know what you think in the comments below and whether you'd like to see more videos like this in the future. The next build I'm hoping to do is going to be a Ryzen build with AMD graphics. Anyway guys, if you like this video then please hit the like button and please subscribe to the channel. And whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you in the next video.